So one of the things I want you to be able to do in the studio is take pictures of your work, whether it's sculptural or functional. So we have this nice photo booth here. There's a light switch right up there. And you can take your pictures simply with a, um, with a uh, cell phone camera. Uh, you can bring in a real camera if you want to, but I'm guessing most of you have one of these with you. So a couple things to keep in mind. I've got a sculpture up here, but it, most of it applies to a functional work as well. If you're taking a picture of a sculpture or a functional work, you want to think about uh, your angle, where, getting a, a good perspective on this. So if I organize, if I line up my camera this way, like that, I'm really kind of cutting it real close. I'm, I'm not being able to see much. Uh, I've got a lot of space up above, and I've got not got much sp space on either side. If I turn my camera this way. I've got that piece fits in the frame a lot better without a lot of empty space around it. Now I can also adjust uh, my the angle that I my camera is at. Right now I'm kind of lined up with the piece. If I bring my camera up a little higher, and we do have stools, so if you're shorter than me, we can get you up on a stool. We uh, you can take a, a picture from a little bit higher angle, and you can see what's going on inside of here. Now, a lot of people are tempted to take an angle like this and then come over here and take an angle like this, but what's happening here is I'm getting this paper, this edge of the paper showing up. So pick up your piece, turn it around, or turn it around this way, or whichever angle that it is that you want to get, and adjust the, the, the position of the work as well as the camera. Don't just get stuck moving the camera. Now this piece has some interesting glaze going on on the inside, so I've got a couple of things we can do to get that. One is we can simply tip the piece up like this. Won't work for all sculptures, but I can tip the piece up and that gives us a nice view of the, the glaze inside, but we also get that nice plain gradient behind. If you take the picture from kind of up above like this, you, you sometimes get the shadow in the way, uh, the shadow of your phone, and you also uh, don't get that nice gradient behind. If this is too much of an angle for you, you can get something back here, uh, a stamp, or in this case a bowl, and uh, uh, prop this up a little bit. And that can also help you adjust and get a slightly different angle on the piece. For sculpture, my recommendation is that you always have at least three views of one piece. So a view from here, a view from here, a view from above, maybe there's something exciting going on in the back. Um, and then you could also, if you've got a part that is really interesting, uh, really uh, calls for it, you can use your zoom in feature and you can get in there and do a detail shot. I'm still recommending you have it in the photo booth because you, if, you, if your detail shot shows some of the background, like mine shows some background right here, it's a nice plain background rather than the background of the table or the other things in the classroom. Now, there are some techniques we can use to get rid of some light glare, so there's a lot of glare on this glaze. We can get in here and we can try to mess with um, using a piece of paper or a piece of typing paper might be better um, to ease up some of that glare. The one trouble we run into is I've taken away some of the light, the glare and the light. Um, and so if you want to explore some more, um, some more photo tips and things like that, I'm going to direct you to our photo instructor and he'll be coming in and, and talking to the class about this as well. Thank you.